Hey guys, so I am a beginner gardener and today I am going to be reacting to a video by Grow Veg called Gardening Hacks 10 Simple Tips for a Successful Vegetable Garden. Now I am actually really excited to react to this particular YouTuber because I have seen a few of his other videos and he just has so much enthusiasm. It's it's just so vibrant and lovely. So here we go. There are always new things to try in the garden in the quest for more harvest with less effort. And anything which saves a little time, increases the chances of success, or saves money is worth considering. Here are our top 10 gardening hacks. Wow, I guess I've never seen um one of his old videos before he looks so different. I'm assuming this is the same person. <laughs> Turn a long handled tool into a measuring stick. Lay the tool on the ground and place a tape measure next to it. Using a permanent marker, write measurement marks onto the handle. When you need to space plants a certain distance apart, you'll already have a measuring device in your hand. Rejuvenate old plastic labels by rubbing with sandpaper. Permanent marker will be rubbed away quite easily and you'll get several years of use out of them. Or make your own labels. Used clean yoghurt pots can be cut into strips to make several labels from one pot. Those look like some pretty thick plastic labels. I reuse some that I have that have come with plants. I haven't bought any plastic labels. I normally just write on the containers. Since I use a lot of just recycled containers, I also just rely on remembering what I put in there. Uh, I did actually receive a gift of these plant labels and they're actually chalk labels. Well, they're made of slate, I'm assuming, but you can write on them with chalk. Maybe not so useful in the exposed outdoors because the rain would just wash the chalk away, but for a greenhouse or for starting your plants inside, they have been pretty useful. They're so sturdy, I've used them for other things too, uh, to hold up covers over plants and whatnot because I have to protect my indoor plants that I'm starting for my cats. Aside from plastic labels, I'm sure there's other options. I've seen some people use popsicle sticks as labels. I've never really dived deep into the label world of gardening, but I'm sure there are plenty of other alternatives to plastic, or you can use his tip right here if you already have plastic labels lying around. He uses yogurt containers to make labels and I use yogurt containers just as pots a lot of the time, but I suppose they look very useful as labels too. Or for a more natural look, smooth flat stones of various sizes can be written on with paint or permanent marker and can be placed unobtrusively at the base of your plants and reused each year. I suppose, yes, the most natural and cheapest option is just picking up a uh, light-colored stone and writing on it. And that could actually look pretty cool if you have some stones of a few different colors and you have those dispersed throughout your garden. If you're all out of cloches and there's an unexpected frost forecast, use a terracotta pot instead. Turn them upside down and pop one over your precious seedlings. It'll act as a warm jacket against a light frost. Don't forget to remove it in the morning so your plant can get the light it needs to grow. This past winter, I've tried a number of methods to try to protect my plants from just those days or nights that have gotten to the extreme colds. I had some spinach and other cold weather plants planted and I really wanted them to last the whole winter. So I tried various methods to some success rates to keep those plants alive. Probably the most successful, aside from nature, providing snow as a cover for the spinach. That's really useful if it snows right before it gets super cold. The spinach seems to just love that and be really protected under the snow. I've piled leaves on top of plants. I did try c using like cutouts from plastic milk jugs 
the bottoms of plastic milk jugs. I tried putting over the plants and then covering them <laughs> with a blanket or a shower curtain and piling leaves on top. This was when there was one just extreme week. It was negative 30, which was very odd. So I really wanted to <laughs> protect them because it was such a big dip in temperature and I knew even spinach, it would be very unlikely to survive that. But I found, I don't know, maybe it provided too much airspace putting the plastic jug on top of it, but the ones where I actually, I ran out of plastic jugs and I just covered with a blanket or a shower curtain and then put leaves on top of it and there was also a little bit of snow accumulation too, but not too much. Those survived like nothing happened. There was no damage whatsoever, whereas the ones where I'd put the milk jugs on, even though I also covered them and put leaves over the top of them, they suffered often a significant amount of damage. So I suppose sometimes less is more <laughs> and spinach doesn't mind being temporarily smothered for a week because this, this cold weather lasted a little over a week. I was very impressed <laughs> that the plant survived. If you garden organically, the chances are that come aphid season, you'll have them infest your plants. Many gardeners tackle this by squishing them with their fingers. It's a messy job. You could try blasting them off. I don't think I could bring myself to pick off aphids and just squish them with my fingers. I, even as a kid, I remember my dad had a garden, but he never had enough time to maintain it. Anyway, the tomato plants would always get tomato worms all over them, so me and my siblings would go and kind of pick them off, though I didn't like to use my hands. I'd kind of use a stick to get them off the plant, and then we would squish them, and as I got older, it, it got even harder. I felt bad. If you live in a hot area or have a particularly sunny spot in your garden, you might find that thirsty plants like cucumbers and tomatoes dry out quickly without irrigation, reducing the crop or quality. Side note, last year, I don't know it, if it was my area since it was the first time I had gardened really as an adult or if it was because I planted some herbs around the tomato plants. I planted basil and parsley around the tomato plants. Not a single tomato worm. Nothing. Nothing ate the tomato plants at all. And the tomatoes were amazing. Make water reservoirs out of plastic water bottles to keep your plants healthy. Drill a few small holes into the cap to allow water to percolate out. Cut the bottom off the bottle. Sink the upturned bottle into the pot or ground before planting, leaving about an inch poking above the layer of the soil. I love how to the point he is on these. It's just very fast paced, it doesn't have a lot of background, it's just straight to the point giving you all these simple tips for a successful vegetable garden. And I have seen that before. I remember things like that being advertised over a decade ago for your house plants. Reduce your water bill by reusing water from your kitchen. Save the water from boiled veggies and once it's cooled use it to water your garden or your pots. If you use a plant-based dishwashing detergent, this water too can be used on your garden. Don't use it if you've washed pot. That's somewhere I fail at is using leftover water or gray water for the garden. I try to collect some rainwater, though I don't have that many useful containers to collect it in, but I do collect some rainwater and assuming it hasn't been a dry spell, I can typically get by for quite a while using <laughs> collected rainwater to water the plants that need a little extra water. Some vegetables like beans and peas don't like to have their roots disturbed, so conventional wisdom is to plant them in situ and not to plant out. This has some problems as seeds can rot in cool soil and damaged plants will result in gaps. Bypass this by making your own pea and bean planters from cardboard tubes. Fill with potting soil and sow seeds as usual. Store the tubes in a tray to prevent the flaps from failing. When ready for planting out, plant the seedling and tube as one. I have tried to use cardboard tubes for some of my seedlings, but I find they just don't retain water. I have to water them so often and Oh, I've used, I've tried egg cartons too and those just dry out so quickly. So I've, 
I resorted to mainly using recycled plastic containers, bottoms of water bottles or milk jugs. Luckily, my roommates drink a lot of milk. Also, e yogurt containers. I have successfully planted out some pole beans that I grew in containers. They did all right. The only thing is I wasn't successful with the bush beans I planted out. They weren't quite as strong on the stem, I suppose, because I have a problem with cutworms in my garden, and so once I planted them, the worms just chewed the stems right off. So it was a little disheartening. I was able to get past that with some plants I planted out later by wrapping packing paper around the stem to protect it. Use garden planning software to help plan what you're going to grow and where. Good planning reduces the risk of losing plants by sowing at the wrong time, spacing them incorrectly or forgetting to rotate crops to reduce the likelihood of soil-borne pests and diseases from one year to the next. It will also help you to plan succession planting so you can quickly see where gaps will appear and have plants ready to fill those gaps. Make that looks adorable. This software, it's got little tomatoes. Um, I tried, not with software, any software in particular, but I had designed some graphs of my garden when I first started it and I believe I used PowerPoint and just put little circles or if I could find little clip arts of tomatoes in different sections and it just it looks adorable and it gets you really excited. I haven't done that recently now that I've kind of gotten the hang of where everything's going. Making sure you get as much food as possible from your space. I do regularly. I have an Excel sheet where I list the recommended planting or seed starting time for all the things I'm planting this year. It's been very helpful. I can I can see if I'm ahead of schedule or if I need to plant something soon and I can kind of prepare. And then I also use that same sheet to input my planting dates for certain things. And I could add notes if I say next year I want to plant it a little bit later or a little bit earlier, depending how it turned out, or if I want to start the seeds in a different manner. What's your top gardening hack? Share it with us by leaving a comment in the box below and subscribe to our channel for more great gardening videos. All right, that was a jam-packed video full of tips. I am so glad I got to watch that. Goodbye.